what up everybody thanks for tuning in to dub by tv make sure you hit that like comment and subscribe button we finna talk about tupac and his estate man we finna talk about the time when tupac daddy came forth to say he was the biological father and he was looking for that money from the estate because you know if tupac didn't have no will the money supposed to have been split up but if Feeney shakur tried to take everything and say uh, Tupac daddy was dead and then she still had to pay that lawsuit in Pine Bluff uh, Arkansas when a lady got shot you know what I mean at the club and you know what I'm saying got paralyzed from the waist down a lot of people don't know that lawsuit was for 15 million dollars and then the club had got sued for a lot of money like 500k man so yeah we finna talk about that, man, because, you know, Tupac State had roughly like $50 million owed to it. Tupac didn't have no money at the time, but his mama had to go get it from Interscope, uh, Death Row, MCA, everywhere, man. They had this money tied up from movies, uh, soundtracks, album sales. But let me play y'all a clip of what I'm talking about. Just chill. Tupac ashes had hardly cooled before the gold rush began. Now, almost a year after his death, his mother is defending the estate from an old lover who turned up to prove he's Tupac's father. An Arkansas court has already awarded $16.6 .6 million to a woman who was shot and paralyzed from waist down at a Pine Bluff, Arkansas rap concert. Until a tentative settlement last week, Tupac's label, Death Row Records, was demanding a $7 million slice, and as Thomas Mann wrote, a man's dying is more the survivors of zone. Since Tupac was murdered last September, his multi-million dollar legacy has become the contentious affair of kin, colleagues and alleged opportunists from LA to Australia. In his lifetime, Tupac's profane rap lyrics and violent encounters made him controversial, helping to swell by tens of millions of dollars for the Death Row label and its corporate benefactors, Interscope Records, Time Warner and Seagram's Universal formerly MCA. Yet Tupac was almost broke when he died. Alleging massive fraud and conspiracy, Fishbein and Afeni Shakur sued Death Row Records jailed CEO, Marion, Shug, Knight, and his lawyer, David Kenner. They still owed Tupac at least $10 million, the suit alleged, and $7.1 million more in expenses charged to his account that he hadn't incurred, including $120,000 for a house Kenner rented. As of last Friday, the estate was close to settling on its terms, according to Fishbein. Even before that, he adds, there was $7 million on hand from royalties in movies. A settlement could ultimately push the estate's value to $50 million, estimates one person close to the matter. Its imprisoned CEO wanted millions more. Even C. Dolores Tucker, the gangster rap foe, wants a chunk. She and her husband claim that a lyrical attack by Tupac iced their sex life. It's like being on a ship and watching pirates trying to loot it, says attorney Richard Fishbein, who administers the estate with Tupac's mother, Afeni Shakur. The fortune increases the stakes in the ugly probate battle in Los Angeles between Tupac's parents. Tupac had no will, but there seems little doubt that he would have wanted his mother to inherit. The identity of his biological father had always been in doubt. Although Afeni had once been a confessed drug addict, her son loved and supported her, writing a song about her titled, Dear Mama. But California law requires the estate to be split by the parents if there's no will. Enter William M. Garland, who has established paternity through DNA testing. Afeni had contended that Tupac's father was dead, says Garland's attorney, Mitchell Rhinus. Says Fishbein, we call it the case of the deadbeat dad. He won't be rewarded for his lack of interest in his son. Man, y'all heard that, man. Enough on that, man. Peace on my...